will live in the wilderness and not repeat history. Amen. Don't do the same mistakes they did. I'm not going to go over all of them because now we're at Philadelphia, which is the six, number six here. And this one here uh, kept God's name. And you know what gives them all the... What we have done, this was started six months ago. Somewhere yeah. in that. But, and we have been checking out Calvary Community Church against these. Mm -hmm. And guess what, saints? We are batting a thousand. Give the Lord a Uh, these are all on YouTube, by the way. All of these teachings are on YouTube. Where each one of them went wrong. And we checked out where they went wrong. We found no trace of those things here at Calvary Community Church. No trace. And now, as Smyrna would come to Philadelphia, let's just have a quick glance, just a quick glance at Philadelphia. At verse 8, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. What is he saying? And no man shall shut it. Amen. He's telling us at Calvary Community Church for our year of Jubilee, Pastor Ron, God has given us an opportunity this year. He's opened the door. A door is an opportunity. Amen. This is not the price is right. Behind door number one. Door, no, no, no. This is a door. This is a window of what's a window of opportunity. Window this of opportunity. is a window of opportunity. It's right now, right here. In this time of your life, he sets before you a decision. Choose you this day. And when God made that line in the sand through Moses and said, Choose you, this golden calf or me. And a third of them stayed, or two thirds, that was two thirds of them. I could be wrong, but quote me on that. I think it's two thirds. The Bible says, when they chose the golden calf over Moses and the law of God, the earth opened up and swallowed them. You talk about a mass grave? Well, a mass grave. I, that's, that's not for me. I, I'm, I'm not a glutton for punishment. I want God to smile for more. So he says, I, have, I know your works. I have set before you an open door. That's a window of opportunity. This is an opportunity, and no one will shut it. Aren't you glad today that what we've set out to do, no person, no man, no weapon formed against it can stop it? Amen. Say amen. Yeah. When you make a choice for Jesus, no one can stop you but yourself. Amen. amen. When you make a choice for Christ, no one can stop you amen. but yourself. Right. <clears throat> you have a little strength, but you've kept my word. You have not defiled my name. Here at Calvary Community Church, we do not smear the name of our Lord. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan that say they are Jews and they're not. This is the same thing that happened to Smyrna. The same thing that happened in Smyrna. There were people who called themselves real Jews and they were not. They're a bunch of phonies. And the phonies are the ones that point the finger the hardest. Amen. You can tell that in the politics in America. Amen. The ones that call out names, abuses, and they condemn others for what they do themselves, these are the false ones. And I have this message for America. The promise of God to the Philadelphia church is that, and the Smyrna church is equivalent to those who are holding fast in America the truth Amen. and the preservation of our Constitution. We will stand when others fall. Yes. Amen. Amen. You have little strength, but you kept my word. And I, indeed, I make those of the sitting on the Satan who say they are Jews or not, but by indeed I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. How many want to know God loves you? Amen. And that he has bestowed upon you blessings upon me. Because you have kept my command to persevere. Here's God's response. I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell there on the earth. 
Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast yes. to what you've got. That no man may take thy crown. Somebody shout amen. Amen. With Sardis a, little, a few minutes ago, he said, remember what you had in me at the beginning and strengthen those things that remain that are about to die. He says, hang on to what you had, man. Hang on to it for dear life. Let no man may take your crown. He who overcomes him, and I will make him a pillar. In Does that sound familiar, Wednesday night crowd? Yes. Yes. If you're not here on Wednesday, we'll forgive you. <clears throat> you can come and join us and find out what the pillars are doing these days. He said, I, I, <laughs> and I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from out of heaven, my God, and I will write on him my new name. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen and amen. amen. The Spirit is saying something to the church today. Yes. Listen to me now. The Spirit, to, to every one of these seven churches, he always ends with this, he that has an ear. Here. Your kids have ears to hear, but they won't listen. They have ears, they have the facility, they have the faculty, they will hear, but they won't listen. You're, you're able to hear from God. You're, you're able to hear His voice. You're able to feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit in His head. Nah. Well, no, I'm not ready for it yet. Well, not some other time. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, come off. Come off of it. If today, you have that conviction. Procrastination will be your worst enemy. Amen. Amen. You don't know if you'll be alive this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You don't know that. In the blink of an eye. And do you want to go face your God and eternity without having your heart pure before you? That's right. I don't. I fear God. <laughs> and we must have a healthy fear of God. A reverential fear of God. Your lifestyle that you have designed and pattern for yourself is wholly inadequate and it's a poor representation if you call yourself a Christian. We have the Word of God that gives us the clear pattern of how Christians are to live. Yes. And that's the way it is. So here we are again with the Smyrna Church and Philadelphia Church. Now, here we are. I don't go in the Spirit unless the pastor knows something I don't. All right? I don't know of anything in our church right now. In 17 years, I'm glad to see Chris here today. She was with us 15, 16 years ago, back in the living room with her mom and dad and grandchildren. Remember those days? We've never had a church split in this church. 17 years, never. We're, we're, we're not structured to make that a possibility here. We're just not structured that way. We're the family here. Amen. I showed you a while ago. Your hands like this, right? We're family here. Try to pull us apart. Amen. Go ahead, try to pull these hands apart. Maybe Charlie White or Bill here, or little Steve back there. These 71 year old hands. But I'll give them a run for their money, I promise you. Amen. <laughs> But try to tear us apart here at Calvary Community Church. No, because where I'm not strong enough to hold you back, I have four more like me that'll take you on instantly. Amen. Okay? That's right. That's Amen. Right. They cover my back. And I'm going to tell you something. Twice on Sunday. Huh? Twice on Sunday. And twice on Sunday. So we have here at Calvary Community Church people who watch your back. Amen. Right. People who love you, who stand by you. We're not quick to condemn, but they will help you where you're weak. That's right. Because they want to see Christ glorified in their life. That's right. So we have, we're patting a thousand folks, and now we're going to go to the La Laodicean church, the worst of them all, next Sunday, Lord willing. Hmm. The Laodicean church, the lukewarm church. Hmm. Lord Jesus. <laughs> pretty bad, pretty bad. We're going to look at that next week. Let's make sure that after we're done these seven churches, we're still batting a thousand. And I think that this is going to give us a tremendous shuttling 
launch into 2017, which is the year of Jubilee for Calvary Community Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we are so grateful for our salvation, so grateful for what God's done for us. He has blessed us beyond measure. But Father, we pray this morning as we preach the Word of God, someone here today, or more than one, especially those listening by CD or viewing by the YouTube today, perhaps they have lost some ground and need to be restored. Perhaps they have a desire in their hearts not to pursue this wrong road that they're on but rather they want to hear the voice of God as your word says in Hebrew that was read prior to the message. If today you hear the voice of God through his preaching of the word, harden not your heart. Don't throw it away. Don't dismiss it. It is Jesus that is speaking to you. <clears throat> they need to regain lost ground today. They need to allow the Holy Spirit to revive within them the initial experience they had with God. Yes. <clears throat> and not have their testimony tainted with self and the occupations and the allurements of this world. Let those that sin, sin no more. Those that claim the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and those that proclaim His gospel. Depart from evil. So, Father, if there's someone here today that's willing to give their hearts back over to you because they can see that they've lost the ground, they don't have the same fervency that they once had. We pray, Lord, that those that surround them today will ignite something new and fresh and living inside of them, especially after their hearing of the gospel here today. Something new and fresh and living in them right now to renew that wonderful experience and exuberance of joy that comes <laughs> with our initial salvation. So we come to you, Lord, just as we are, needing your help to regain ground and then plant the flag and say, as for me and my house from this moment on, we are serve the Lord. And we're going to gain new ground. As every head is bowed and every eye is still closed, if this has spoken to you today and you want to regain old ground that you have lost, I want you to raise your hand and I'll include you in my closing prayer right now throughout this room. God bless each and every one of you. If you've lost ground, give it over to the Lord. And if you want to gain new ground in God, you're stagnant, but you want to move on and you need God's help to do that, please raise your hand also so we can trust the Lord. Amen. God bless each and every one. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, today for these who have raised their hands and their hearts before you. We have preached the word of the unfeigned faith, the sincere faith, the true faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The only legitimate one that we can place our faith in. The only legitimate one. Because there is no one like you, Lord. No one. There's no God like our God. He's the creator of all things. And today we come to him just as we are. And today we call upon the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith right now. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And right now, Father, we pray in Jesus' name that that blood may be applied to their hearts. And that the joy of the Holy Spirit and of their salvation may come to them even now. Strengthen, O God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, at this hour, this moment, that they're going to sense that reviving of the Holy Spirit, of the reviving of that initial first love that the Ephesians church had lost. That we would fall in love with Jesus one more time. That we would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if we were to go from this world today, that we would leave this world with no regrets. Loving everyone for having forgiven and extended the grace of God to everyone. And putting Christ first in line 
top priority in our lives and his beloved spouse, the church, his bride. For to love one another is to love you. So we give ourselves, Lord, to you and the church today. And we count ourselves into the body of Christ as we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Let us stand for the reading of the scriptures.